This is one of Dell's fanciest mainstream servers. It's the R760. It has all these kind of great features. Like for example, you can do awesome things like take out the fan partition super easily. It also has a ton of different configuration options, whether that's the cards in the back, the storage up front. I mean, there are just tons of options in this thing because it's meant to do just about anything. And that's why these servers tend to be extremely popular. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is a Dell PowerEdge R760, which is Dell's fancy mainstream server. This is definitely one of Dell's flagship models. It is not a stripped down bare bones type system that has you know very few features. I mean, this thing's actually a very nice system when we went and tore it apart. And as we were doing the review for the STH main site, I said, hey, why don't we also go do a video? Because I bet you a lot of folks want to see this. Now, I know that we have a range of folks that watch these videos. Some folks buy Dell PowerEdge, whatever the newest model like this is, every version, and they just kind of cycle them through their data centers over you know three or five years. And then there are other folks Folks that wait for that cycle to happen and then go buy these things off lease and they put them in their home labs. So if you're uh, you know, buying them today, you're gonna learn about the new model. And if you're gonna be buying these in three to five years when they come off of lease to go put in your home lab, well, just bookmark this video and you can go watch it then. And in this video, we're gonna go over this configuration right here. Now, this is just one configuration. There are a bunch of different configurations that you can get, but I do wanna go and take you through the hardware and show you what some of the new innovations are. I'm also gonna explain what makes a PowerEdge R760 different from other servers in the industry. Then we're gonna talk about the performance and power consumption of this configuration. It's pretty wide spectrum, you know, in something like this. And then I wanna talk about some of just the key lessons learned before we wrap up. With that, let's get to the hardware. Now, looking at the front of our system, we have a 24 bay, two and a half inch configuration. There are other configurations, like you could get a 16 bay configuration, that's two and a half inch, where you have two and a half inch drives on either side, and then an empty space in the middle for airflow. There are other configurations where you can have like three and a half inch drives. There are a ton of different options in terms of the actual storage you put in there. I mean, let's just, let's just say that there is a lot of configurability here. And just to kind of show you that, we have both SAS drives on one side, and then also NVMe drives on the other other side of the same system. Now, of course, these days, I think folks are gonna be buying a lot more NVMe drives just because the performance is better. And uh, you know, but if you're paying for the flash anyway, why not put it on NVMe? The other thing though, is that in the Dell ecosystem, a lot of folks rely on Perk for their RAID, although Dell has a very cool boss solution for that. We're gonna get to in a bit. Still, just having the ability to have RAID, I think that's why folks do the SAS controllers these days. And providing a lot of that customization capability is this backplane. You'll see that this backplane is broken into three different sections. And by having three different sections, you can have things like an NVMe on one side. You can also have things like SAS controllers, SAS expanders, anything that you really need to put in there, Dell has a solution for. And you kind of see this is like our SAS infrastructure here where we have the extra card. And then up here, we don't because this is all NVMe. Okay, now looking at the back of the system, you're gonna see a ton of different features. One that is pretty obvious is the power supplies. Dell actually has some pretty skinny power supplies, which gives them more room for their IO in the back. And these skinny power supplies, we have a uh, 1.4 kilowatt one here. It's an 80 plus platinum design. And we're gonna talk about power consumption when we start testing this. On the back of the system, you're gonna see your standard iDRAC port as well as two USB ports and a VGA port for local access. You're also gonna see two network IO slots. One of them is just a kind of custom LOM slot that Dell is using here, and you'll see the RJ45 ports there. And then you also see the SFP ports, and those are for an OCP NIC 3.0. Dell has done away with doing custom proprietary form factors and has adopted OCP NIC 3.0, at least in one of the two card slots. Something that you will definitely notice that's very different between this and some like kind of older systems, like you look at maybe like R720, 710, something like that. You'll see that the motherboard doesn't go all the way to the back. Instead, all of these IO blocks, the iDRAC block and then the two network blocks, they're all connected to the motherboard, which stops I mean, the motherboard stops about here and then all the IO is behind that. That is gonna be something that we're gonna see more of as things like the OCP DC MHS, you know, become more popular in server design. This is not a DC MHS server, but at the same time, it is conceptually kind of similar to that in terms of how they're doing the rear IO. And the IO on the server is not just the networking LOMs and stuff like that. Instead, there are a total of eight PCIe slots. And because we have a new fourth generation of Intel Xeon scalable processors, we have PCIe Gen 5 is one of the big upgrades in the system. Now, Dell on these risers has fairly easy, they're probably not the easiest anymore to remove out of a system, but they are still, you know, toolless and fairly easy to remove risers. And you get PCIe Gen 5 now, which is awesome. 
PCI Gen 5 for server vendors has been very difficult just because it's harder on the signal integrity side and because it's harder on signal integrity, doing things like making risers is just more challenging than it was in previous gens. So great job by Dell to have all of this configuration capability in a system that's like this. Now, one of my favorite features in Dell servers for years is probably the worst RAID controller that they have, or at least the lowest cost RAID controller that they have in here. And that feature is called the Dell Boss. And you can kind of see it like right here in the system. That's where that's where this is. And you'll see on the back of this system that there are two little hot swappy looking things, and they actually have little carriers for M.2 drives. Okay, so let's now get inside the system and look at what makes this thing tick. So the first thing I've already showed you at the very beginning of this video is that you can actually remove not just each individual fan and hot swap those, but you can also remove the entire fan partition very easily. That may not seem like a big deal if you don't work inside servers, but if you do work inside servers, there's so much cable routing nowadays that have to go to support things like NVMe drives that having the ability to quickly remove that fan partition and get under there and really, you know, connect things on the motherboard and stuff, it becomes a super important thing if you want to do quick and easy service. That's one that frankly, I just love. Now behind that fan partition is the big show of the system, right? You get two Sapphire Rapids or fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable processors. We have Xeon Platinum processors in here. And something that you'll notice is that the heat sinks on these are fairly compact. We've seen other heat sinks with a giant dog ears and stuff like that in this generation. And just to kind of give you some sense of how big they get, you know, you can see these right here and yeah, they're cool. And there's two of them, whatever. This is what Microsoft uses in some of its uh, dual socket servers of this generation. So, um, you know, hopefully you guys can see this, but this is, uh, this is way bigger than a Dell heatsink, we'll just call it that. Now with the new fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable processors, we get a host of new features. We already talked about PCIe Gen 5, but we also get DDR5. Now, while we still have eight channels of memory like we had in the third generation Intel Xeon scalable Ice Lake, not Cooper Lake, but we still have the same number of memory channels, we get about 50% more bandwidth just by virtue of having you know, the, the DDR5 transition. So we went from DDR4 in the previous gen to DDR5 in the R760. We also get two DIMMs per channel capability, which means that you can put with eight channels, you can put two DIMMs per channel or 16 DIMMs per CPU. And then you can also have you know two CPUs, which gives you a total of 32 DIMMs. Having more memory just slots in the system allows you to go and add lower capacity DIMMs and still hit you know a, a higher total memory capacity and lower capacity DIMMs tend to cost less than higher capacity ones. And so that's why that's used by a lot of folks. And if you wanna learn more about DDR5, we have a piece that we did on Micron and that will teach you all about DDR5 RDIMMs and also what's the difference now between RDIMMs and UDIMMs because it's very different than in previous generations. But that fourth generation Intel Xeon Scalable does not just give you simple things like having DDR5 and PCI Gen 5. You also get built-in acceleration. One of the big ones right now is AMX, which are Intel's advanced matrix extensions, I think, and that is for really the AI extensions. So these processors have features built into them that give you the ability to accelerate common AI workloads. Now, will you still use GPUs for things like large language models and all that kind of stuff? Of course you will. Intel also has other accelerators for doing things like Quick Assist to accelerate crypto and compression. They have things to help you move data around the system and all kinds of stuff. So we have an entire piece dedicated to the fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable processors. If you wanna go learn more about that, we'll link it in the description. But we went into huge amounts of detail there that we're not gonna go over in a server review. Now getting beyond the CPU and memory, cause we went into that for a while, let's just talk a little bit about the motherboard. You're gonna see that Dell's actually using a lot of high density connectors in their platform, which is a little different. A lot of other vendors that we see are just cabling all of their risers because it costs a little bit more, but uh, you tend to be able to get pretty good signal integrity. Dell is tackling that problem in a different manner and they're actually making some kind of like high density connectors for some of the risers, which is just a little bit different. It's just something that you see in Dell. As you go through the server, something that you definitely see if you look at a lot of different brands of servers is that Dell does a great job of like over-engineering a ton of things. There are, you know, flat cables that are routed through this whole thing. You can see like one of these flat cables here. And then just even little things like the retention mechanism for the SAS or NVMe backplanes, like those things are really nice in this. There's just a lot of really nice engineering that goes into this. And it is definitely a step above a lot of other vendors. Do those little features necessarily give you the most performance per dollar? Absolutely not but they are really nice if you do have to go service them. This is a very easy platform to work on. Now, before we go and get into our performance and power consumption section, I do wanna talk about iDRAC. We showed you the service port, but the other thing that you get with iDRAC is you get the entire suite. So if you have tens of thousands of these servers, hundreds of these
these servers, whatever it is, you can go and use Dell's tools to manage fleets of these. And that includes things like managing security and also managing just simple things like, you know, how, how do you make sure that all of your bio settings are the same if you want them to be? One really cool thing that I absolutely love in iDRAC is the ability to go and set BIOS features. Still in 2023, not every vendor has the ability to do that via the web UI. A lot of them do have it via Redfish APIs, but the web UI, I just, I just kind of think is just so awesome that Dell does that here. And that even extends to little small things like being able to pick at your next boot, which device you want to boot from. That doesn't seem like a big deal until you're sitting around and you have to go hit a you know, IPMI keystroke or something like that to be able to go and actually boot to a ISO image or something like that. It's just those little things that Dell has improved upon over the years and really make this a very refined server. Okay, so let's talk about performance here. So the nice thing is that we have so many servers from different vendors now that we are able to just kind of go and just run the same workloads and just kind of figure out like, you know, is a server faster than another? This particular one um, is basically pretty much baseline for the Xeon Platinums that we had in there. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty darn close. It's all within about one, one and a half percent or so, which is a test variation. So this definitely has very good cooling performance. And if you want to see the difference between this generation and other generations, or if you want to see like AMD Epic and like Genoa and stuff like that, we have all of that on the STH main site. Although we typically are doing Doing those in the CPU reviews. Again, you'll find links in the description. One thing though that was a little bit different with this system was the idle power consumption. I, I don't really have uh, any idea why we actually took it out of the data center. We ran it here in the studio just to see like, you know, if there's something funky going on, like what it was, we could not find it. But this thing idled um, at like, like a couple hundred watts. And that was in Ubuntu 22.04. I don't really know why. I feel like that is a mistake, but we couldn't get it to idle at anything lower than that. So um, I, I, I just don't know why that just feels like it's too much. Now for a pretty simple configuration like this, where we have two Xeon Platinum CPUs, some memory, we have some drives, and then we also have a couple of adding carts, something like these 1.4 kilowatt power supplies are fine. If you do put things like GPUs in there or other options, especially on the adding card, or if you just go like all NVMe up front or something like that, you are gonna use a lot more power just from the add-on cards than the CPUs. And so therefore, there's a good chance that you need something that is uh, more powerful than these 1.4 kilowatt PSUs, but Dell has that. They also have special cooling kits for GPU systems. And beyond the system itself, if you are ordering a new server, Dell has a ton of options on their configurator for different OS settings. If you want to get like high performance computing BIOS settings, you can get those preloaded onto this. So when you order it, you can unbox it, put it in, and you already have those BIOS settings. It's a really cool service that Dell offers that not all vendors do. So in all of these videos, I love to have key lessons learned. And so let's talk about some of the key lessons I learned from this thing. The first thing by far is that the Dell PowerEdge R760 is an awesome machine. It feels like a Rolls Royce or something like that of servers. It's just so fancy. It's like the Bentley. I don't know exactly what you'd want to call it, but it is definitely engineered to a different level. And just even little things like how the little fittings work and how all the little things are screwed together. It's just like a totally different level than what other folks do. And even though I'm a big fan of just kind of standard management interfaces like OpenBMC and stuff like that, I really like iDRAC 9 just because there are so many features. And I think that's really the point of the Dell servers, right? You can go get a white box server and you know use all the open tools that are out there, or you can just go into the Dell ecosystem where there are things like open manage and all those types of things to go and manage fleets of servers. It's you're gonna pay for it, but it's already built for you. I think that's also the reason why most of the customers for this are gonna be existing Dell customers, because if you're already bought into a like open manage infrastructure, then it makes sense to just keep adding the new power edge. And this generation is an absolutely huge leap from not just the previous generation, but if you're running something older, like an R740 or 730, something like that, you're probably talking about doing a two to one or greater consolidation ratio. And either consolidating servers or just getting more performance out of the footprint you have is always awesome. One thing I will note though, is that these will use because they're newer generation generation servers, they will use more power. And so you do have to think about like, do you want to go do one U or two U servers? And I think especially on the higher end CPUs in this generation, I think a lot of folks are just going to use two U servers. And even if you've been a one U server shop for a long time, I think that the two U's are starting to make more sense just because you have more efficient cooling. The server processors now use so much more power that power density in a lot of racks is going to be challenged just with the new generations. And if not this one, probably one or two generations down the road. The one thing that we do have to talk about though is the pricing on this configurator. Dell has a ton of options, but let me just go pick out one that I noticed straight away as I was just kind of like looking at what this configuration is. And that is the memory prices. So I'm just kind of looking at this and like a 32 gig uh, RDIM is priced at like 
this is just the price without discounting, uh, $2,150 right now. A 64 gig RDIM is $4,200. Guys, just to give you some idea, we've been buying 32 gig RDIMs for I think like under $200 for a couple months now. And then the 64 gig RDIMs, I don't think we're paying more than like 400 bucks or so. So I mean, like they're literally charging 10X the price, which I think is done so that way they can discount them with your sales rep. So if you go and do like the web configurator price, this system's probably gonna be just crazy numbers. So I know people are gonna go and like look and like say, oh, this is a crazy expensive server, but I think that's what's going on. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, well, go check out our other videos. And if you really like this video, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.